everybody welcome to the paranormal portal it's our wednesday edition we are live and absolutely unprepared and unrehearsed and uh that's just what you've come to love here on the show so you should feel right at home but hope you guys are doing great out there thank you so much for joining us uh those of you coming in we appreciate it and those of you yet to arrive we waited as long as we could but we got to get this rolling so um hope you guys are doing wonderful um it's an epic night here on the show. This is the first time I think we've done this. I might be forgetting another time, but uh, if we did it before, it's a long time ago, and I can't be held responsible for that. But um, we are doing, uh, uh, we're kind of capping off a trifecta of Wednesday shows going down under, down to Australia. And tonight we have a roundtable, uh, and we're welcoming back our good friend Sarah Bignell of Yowie Central, and joining us tonight is our longtime friend and uh, co-conspirator as well, Mr. Cade Moya of the Believe Podcast, and he is here. But before I go any further, i got to give a special thanks to the Paranormal Portal sponsor, and I'm talking about Cryptid Coin, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a newer cryptocurrency dealing with cryptid research and investigation. So if you're looking for an alternative investment, maybe this is a good fit for you. Um, I can't tell you for sure, but uh, take it, take a look at it. Head over to cryptidcoin.io and check it out, see what you think. But we are absolutely thrilled. They are helping to keep the lights on here on the portal. So a special thank you to Cryptidcoin. Again, go to cryptidcoin.io. It's available on PancakeSwap, so check it out. And uh, I'm going to actually leave this screen up because this is the perfect screen in order to uh, welcome our guests and get them on the screen with me as soon as I learn how to line things up a little better. Um, yeah, I got this all smashed weird, don't I? Okay, um, I got to get Sarah on the, on the screen as well and probably make my head a little smaller. Uh, all right, let's see what we can do here. Um, but, Cade, since you're the, the biggest face on the screen right now, how you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm good, mate. How are you? <laughs> That's a hell of an introduction, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're you're the guy with the biggest head, so you talk first. <laughs> it's all you, brother. Bring us home. What's going on in the in the world of the Bleed podcast? Oh, mate, we are we are like one episode away from the end of season fifteen, and I'm very excited for that because that means I get to have a break for uh, for about six weeks until uh, season sixteen comes out. So, um. That's that's very exciting for me because it means I get to chase down guests, find new people to come on the show, and uh, kind of get the the next season in the can, so to say. So it's um it's ready for all the premium members, the Believe Plus members, stuff like that. So um, yeah, hopefully giving lots of good value to the members of uh, of my show. 
Oh, for sure, man. You've been doing some great stuff over there. And uh, if you haven't checked it out, ladies and gentlemen, check out the Believe podcast. Uh, it, Cade's show is really second to none. Well, second maybe to the portal, but uh, other than that, no. <laughs> but it is a great production. Look, I, I, I try my hardest to catch up with you, Brent, but you're you're one of the busiest people in the industry, man. You, uh, I'm glad you're taking like a step back from doing 48,000 live shows a week because you're a madman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I but, had to. <laughs> you know, you guys are killing it. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate the love, and uh, that means a lot. And uh, also joining us, as I mentioned, is our good friend, Miss Sarah Bignell of Yowie Central. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm great. I'm great. So good to be here with you and with Kate at the same time. That's I awesome. I know. This is a <laughs> Except lot of fun. I just wanted to add that mine is the best podcast, but you guys can be second and third. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies first, after all, I guess, right? But no, your, your show is amazing. I don't know. I think I might have you on that one. So, uh, but if that was the case, definitely more beautiful. Oh, oh wait, no, I got I got that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little slow out of the gate. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, uh, we're thrilled to have both of you with us tonight. Uh, of course, we're going to dive into all things paranormal here on the show. Um, we're going to deal with cryptids, ghosts, uh, every every subject. Um, I guess. Where we might as well start is, do you guys see, um, well, Sarah, since you, you, your show is Yowie Central, so I'm sure you probably see most of your shows having to do with Yowie phenomena and such, and in, but you also do handle the spiritual stuff as well, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, as, as you said, the, the, my, my bread and butter is the Yowie stuff and what I'm most fascinated, you know, by, but, uh, but definitely get paranormal stuff being reported and and that involves um other strange cryptid beings it involves orbs uh ufos alien abductions mm-hmm. uh quite a few ghost stories actually this week my show focuses on uh my dear friend and you know yaoi central's resident ghost expert jazz and uh she sees ghosts Pretty much every day, it's a weekly occurrence, and she writes them all down, and then it comes back on my show every few months and tells me all about the latest list of weird <laughs> stuff that happens to her. Um, so yes, there's been lots of ghost stuff, lots of ghost stuff happening at the moment too. That's pretty wild. But uh, Cade, what do you what do you see most of, or is there any is there any one topic that you t- tend to end up covering more than others? Oh, uh, look, I at the moment I'm getting a lot of paranormal. Oh, yeah. encounters, which is which is great because it's very weird. I kind of go through these seasonal riffs of uh, encounters that come on the show because uh, I love a good Yowie story, as really anyone who knows me would know that. Um, but yeah, paranormal sto- stories are they're coming in thick and fast, and I and I really like that because paranormal stories are always so different from each other. Because mm-hmm. you'll find a lot of common elements throughout, like a Yowie story or a UFO encounter, mm-hmm. but paranormal encounters are always really, really personal, and they seem to almost affect the the people who have these encounters a little bit more emotionally. Because I think the the paranormal strikes a different kind of fear in people that it's yeah. completely uncontrollable it, it comes and goes when it wants and I, I mean that's totally relevant to every other kind of uh cryptid encounter or ufo encounter but you can't just if you're living in a haunted house you've got to live in that haunted house like yeah. you can't escape that right so those those encounters are like long lasting and they have a different impact on people. So I'm always super gracious when people share a paranormal encounter because yeah, they are, they are so personal. Yeah, they are. Hey, Kate, can you like move to your left just a little bit? <laughs> Almost got like half of your head on the screen there. So, um, did I move the right way? Yeah, did, you did. did I move the other left or you the, did perfect. The, uh, the U S left? You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think that only has to do with toilets flushing, doesn't it? I mean, the, <laughs> so, so I gotta, I gotta ask you guys because that is an interesting point. Um, and I get asked this a lot, uh, from, from listeners and from, from people when I'm discussing the, the paranormal and the oddities and, and it could be the cryptids, it could be the, the, the paranormal or the UFO stuff, any of it. But are you guys noticing an increase in, in frequency of reports? Um, more people contacting you about phenomena or does it seem to be 
pretty much consistent through the years. Whoever wants to uh, go first. <laughs> uh, I'll go if you like, Kate. Yes, please. Um, go yes. for it. They're coming in thick and fast. And mm. from, I mean, I think we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, you and I, Brent, yeah. that the, the veil is thinning and it reports are coming in about all sorts of things from all sorts of people. Uh, and the, the spiritual people that I'm lucky enough to have contact with, the people who know more about this stuff than I do, are all saying the same thing as well, mm. uh, that... Uh, the veil is very thin at the moment, way thinner than it's been for many, many, many years. And so people are seeing and feeling and sensing and noticing uh, all sorts of things and all sorts of entities, lower vibrational ent entities, higher vibrational entities, strange cryptid creatures, um, all sorts of things are visible at the moment or appearing to us or, or, or coming into our our field of vision uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, I, uh, I'm not 100% sure why and I think we, we discussed the other day that it has something to do with this ascension of the planet from 3D to 5D. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yes, I mean, Kate, are you noticing... I mean, you get, you, you've get you got such a big show and you get a lot of people reporting things to you anyway, but are you noticing there's an uptick in in activity at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a couple of things that kind of go along with it. Um, I think it's, you know, there's, there's so many shows like ours out there and I think people are starting to become a little bit more comfortable coming forward to share these stories. So I don't know if it's necessarily a, a thing of like, the encounters are happening more. It could be the encounters have always been the same. They've always been there. But people are a little bit more comfortable to, to come forward to know that they're not going to be ridiculed anymore because there's, you know, shows like ours that take it super seriously because these are serious encounters at the end of the day. You know, people are having the most terrifying things in the world happening to them and they want to talk to someone about it. Um, so I think that's, that's what it is. And... You know, you really have to, like, let's look at the broader scope. It could be the fact that the the world is just far more open to these things these days. So that's another reason we're seeing more of this because we're basically on the cusp of UFO disclosure. Yeah. And with that, people's minds are, you know, potentially opening to, to so much more than than just UFOs. You know, like that, that paranormal encounter I had, I'm ready to talk about it, that Yowie encounter I had, I'm ready to talk about it. That Sasquatch encounter, I'm ready to talk about that. And then you have all the stuff that kind of fits in between that doesn't really have a, a spot to to go. Like, before people were talking about this stuff, no one was ready to share that type of information because who, who are you going to go talk to when you've, you've seen a rake or something like that? Yeah. Uh, a, this insanely terrifying creature that doesn't really fit the mold of, of anything um, you know, people, I think people are just a little bit more comfortable knowing that if UFOs are real, what else is real? So yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit more open to talking about this now. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, you know, you'd brought up something about the paranormal being a little, a little harder hitting for people. And, and do you think, do you, Sarah, do you think that it might be due to the fact that it's, it's a non completely non-physical uh, phenomena like ghosts and, and, and spiritual stuff is, and, and so that people feel more vulnerable to something that they can't see or, or, or tell that it's there until something happens. Whereas when you think of like a Yowie or, or, or a dog man or anything, it's I mean, while there are woo factors to this that are discussed, generally we, most people believe that there are some kind of physical physicality to it. And, and I mean, as I was thinking about that, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, at least when you can see something, when you can judge, you know, distance and, and you, you feel like you at least have a chance. But if something's invisible and, and around you, do you think maybe that's why that might be a little more intense? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> way more creepy not being able to see something, but knowing, you know, my, I, the, the, the jazz who's on my show this week. Yeah. Uh, she talks about her childhood and how you, you know she had an old analog TV that that had a white dot on the on the channel marker and you could see the channel the the, the knob turning by itself oh. um, or 
CDs would whiz across the room or a little toy would whiz across the room or, um, you know, definitely that, for, for me, that that's, that's scarier, knowing that there's some kind of entity here, something is causing things to move, but I can't see yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, that, that definitely ups the fear factor uh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But ghosts can also be, look entirely physical. Yeah. Like Jazz was talking about um, driving past a, a house that was uh, about to be demolished. So there's no one left living in there and it's in the process of being demolished. She looks up and sees an old lady standing on the balcony um, or, or up looking out through a window or up at the top of the house. Uh -huh. There's no one in there, but this person looked physically like a real Look like they were there. So de definitely, I think that the, the invisible entity stuff is way scarier. But ghosts can come and sure. look like they are totally there, like physical. Yeah, I, I think I think that's very true. I, I think we've all probably talked to people who have <laughs> had conversations with someone that wasn't actually there, but they thought they were. Um, yeah, but do, what do you think of that, Kate? Do you think the physicality of the of the cryptid phenomena makes it? A little more easier to manage psychologically yeah absolutely um kind of like i said a little bit earlier it's easier to run away from a problem <laughs> like a, you could run away from a yowie encounter you can run away from a dogman encounter heck you could you know run away from ufo encounter but usually paranormal encounters are within someone's residence and um you know the the reality is you can't just pack up and leave a house that you know you're either you've got a mortgage on um or you've got a lease on you know you, you're there for an extended period of time and uh the the it's almost like a psychological warfare that goes on with the the people that are within that house makes it so much scarier than and and that's not to really take away the 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 encounters that people have had with you know sure. uh cryptic creatures and, and ufos but the the reality is you know usually those are very fleeting moments absolutely paradigm changing and turn that individuals or that group's uh, world completely upside down. But imagine having to do that day in, day out for a year, two years, three years, five years, you know, the, you, you just have to live with the, the constant fear of, you know, what's going to happen next. And sure. the, the terrible thing is like, that is a genuine reality for a lot of people because there's really not a lot of people you can go to to talk about that or how, how do you even fix that problem? Like sometimes these things just, there's no switch to turn that on and off. You know, that's just yeah. their life now. Yeah. And they're, they're stuck living it. Yeah. That's a tough place to be. Um, I was going to also make sure that oh, those of you that are out there watching and listening, you guys are part of the round table as well. So this is not just a three way discussion. We'd love to have you take part in the discussion as well. If any of you in chat, have comments or questions that you'd like to add to the discussion, please capitalize them at the very least. But if you put at paranormal portal in front of it, it'll give me a nice orange box to really highlight it for me. But uh, uh, otherwise you're welcome to call in. Are you guys okay with taking calls as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So the phone lines are also open, ladies and gentlemen, and that's, uh, let me, <laughs> I always have to look. I'm getting so old. I always have to look to make sure I don't screw it up. It's 720. I'm love. <laughs> it's 720-923-0500. Again, 720-923-0500 is the number, uh, numbers for fun here on the portal. So if you want to call in and ask your question in person, feel free. But otherwise... Feel free to uh, put it in the chat in a way that I can see it uh, so that we can, or I don't know if you, are you guys watching the chats as well? Yeah, I've got it, got it okay. here. I'm okay. glancing down every so often. Yeah, if you'd help me. because <laughs> okay. I've, I've got my, I've got my iPad here and I'm, I'm having a look too. So okay, thank I'm just you guys. trying Am I in the middle of, I'm trying to work out, am I in the middle of the screen or to one side? You're, I've been moving around trying to get myself in the right if, position. If you, go to your, guess, if you go to your right just a little bit, you'll be dead center. There you go. That's pretty good. Now, yeah, if you right. face right, yeah, now you're about perfect. It's just I had to yeah. crop the frame a little bit, so. Okay, that works. Yeah, I can I can see I can see the, the comments. I did want to say something about that, though, because I've had, uh, a, a few people reach out to me recently 
saying that um, that they've had uh, paranormal activity in their homes that's harassing them, harassing their children, mm. causing their children to have nightmares, um, being really, really scary stuff, and and waking up with with scratches and. Uh, you know, throwing knives, something's throwing knives across the room. Oh, um, my God. Something, stuff that can be, could end in, in, in quite a serious injury, if not, if not death. Right. Um, and there are people out there who can help with that. So my friend Jazz, I was telling you about, he's on the show this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's, she can clear a house of ghosts or entities. So um, there are psychic, intuitive mediums, people, uh, shamanic healers, people like that can go into a house and clear the house out of those spirits, even if, you know, and sometimes they don't necessarily want to go, those spirits, but it is possible to get them out of there. So I I just wanted to reassure people who might be going through that, there are people who can help you. Um, You can do your own cleansing of the energy in the room with burning sage uh, and smudging the house, uh, you can use um, those uh, singing bowls, those metal oh, bowls sure. that make a, a beautiful noise when you you run a um, like a baton around the edge of it, um, and you do that uh, throughout your home. That helps kind of clear the energy out and clear those those sorts of ent- entities out. There are some pretty serious, nasty ones though that might have been there for a long time where you need kind of professional help Uh, but but there is help out there yeah absolutely and and i think all three of our shows i think to some degree or another you we know somebody that can help and so you know we i i've managed to assist people in getting that help as well not by me um but but again uh we i have a a few people attached to this show that uh, have volunteered themselves to say if anybody ever reaches out just let me know i'm glad to help i want to help and, uh, and pro bono as well, which is, you know, of course, wonderful. So uh, there's always a, there's always help available. So, um, but yeah, that's a great reminder. I think, I think a lot of times when people are dealing with stuff, they, they do, they feel like they're in their, their own twisted bubble and, and they don't always know that help is available. And that's, that's a frustrating thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're feeling, you know, that you're being attacked psychically um, attacked and and you feel like you're having to deal with this on your own and you don't know what's going on, especially yeah. if you're not um, connected to the spiritual world and you, you're not, it's not an area of interest for you necessarily and you don't know anything about it, mm-hmm. uh, that's even scarier. Yeah. Um, Uncle Donnie, I've just noticed, uh, is a, an original Australian, Indigenous Australian elder and um, he's just commented that they do a smoking ceremony um, as part of a ritual to help clear uh, an entity out of a space. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I yeah. um I recently did a a live show with with two mediums, and it was almost like I went to school because it was it was very educational. And um, one thing that I I learned. And it blew my mind. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this before, but um, they, they, I was going to say implied, but no, they basically said it straight black and white is that some paranormal encounters can happen to a single person because the, the paranormal encounter is actually happening, happening psychically. Oh. So I, I don't know how to, to, you know, to really take that because, you know, you what you're kind of talking about there is like kind of cleaning out the the house and, and doing all the, the, the smudging and stuff. But how do you smudge something that's happening, happening just to you and something that is happening uh, psychically? Because it's kind of like, do you, do you need like, I don't know how to say this, but like extra dimensional protection? Like, do you need like a, a mindful sense of security in that, in that sense? Because if something is doing that, who knows? Like, well, how do you how do you do that? How do you protect from that? Because if something's getting you psychically, that's I feel like that is leaps and bounds over just a, a traditional haunting. And for me, that would be 
just one of the most terrifying things to, to really experience right. because you would feel like you got crazy. Sure. But yeah. you genuinely would. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think with these lower vibrational entities, I think they have nothing but time, you know, whether they are demonic or, or something else that was never a human. I, I think they, that time to them is irrelevant. They'll just sit and wait a decade or two and just watch until they find a way to get through it all. But I, I think, you know, in terms of that, I think some kind of faith is important and I'm not promoting any one faith, but I think that faith of course is a, is a barrier um, and can, can protect you. I think that there are, are, are there practices? Some people embody talismans and stuff that are charged to offer protection, crystals, um, of course, you know, incenses, you know, singing bowls, things like that, the, that resonate the, the positive vibes. I think those are powerful as well, but, um, even visualization, you know, visualizing a bubble around you of light, you know, I think is, mm -hmm. is a, a proper shield in many ways for things like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough and it all depends on the person, right? So, I mean, whatever's, whatever is powerful to them. And that's where I'm speaking of faith mostly whatever they believe is powerful to them will be powerful in, in a defense of such a thing, because, you know, those are like attachments, I think are very similar. Uh, you know, we, we use the term attachments, but I think basically it's a psychic, you know, a psychic connection that's been molded or, or enforced upon a person. And uh, it doesn't really mean that something's got its hooks into you and you're dragging it around. It just means it is always aware of you and, and whatever you're doing. So, um, I am getting some things here. It looks like Jazz is saying, Sarah knows of a guy I was trying to help in the States who had two demonic attachments. I couldn't help him. And that's, that's uh, yeah, that's tough. Um, and, and certainly, if, you know, if that person could be able to contact myself as well. And this isn't, I think that sometimes there's some things we're all able to do and not do. And, and so I, I'm certainly, if you still know that person, uh, I'd be happy to you know, put them in touch with the people that I know as well, because the more people working on something like that, I think the better, especially demonic, because those are, those are ugly, scary kind of things. And uh, yeah. And, and ghost magnet says, how do you all feel about EVPs? I've had the experience that they can change over, over time, which I wouldn't think could happen. Have you ever heard of that happening? Okay, so initially I want to I want to inter, inter inject my own experience recently. Um I was investigating with Charles Howard Johnson over at the Davenport Hotel in Spokane, Washington, and we were in the circus room, which is apparently the most haunted room, and uh, had some really cool experiences there, but we did a a preliminary EVP session and during it we didn't hear anything. There was absolutely silence. He and I were asking some questions and uh, leaving the appropriate space. And when I played it back, I heard, and he heard, we listened to it together. We both heard a little child go, eh, like that. And it, and it certainly wasn't there when we, uh, when we were recording. So it was definitely an EVP. Now when I got home and uploaded that to, and listened both to the, the, the recorder and the uploaded file, I didn't hear it anymore. So I am kind of familiar with that personally. And I don't necessarily understand the dynamic there, but how about, how about you, Sarah? Oh yeah. Look, I'm probably asking the, the wrong person okay. for that. A uh, jazz would be the person to ask about that. Um, I don't, I don't know as much about that, that, that side of things. I do know that she, um, I do remember the the man that she was talking about that she wasn't able to help. He was he was quite distressed, and she did try and help him, but it, nothing she did worked. Very difficult to do from overseas sure. in a, in another country. It's a long way away. I think I would imagine it. I'm guessing it would be easier to do, you know, if you were on the spot. Um, but there was someone else who contacted me recently, and. Uh, I put them in touch with with Jazz, and she sent them Reiki energy, oh. and she also explained to him a few things he could do to clear the house. I got an email the other day from the person who'd, who'd um, put me in touch with him, and he said that since he spoke to Jazz, since he had uh, connected with her, all paranormal activity has stopped in the house. Oh, fantastic. So, 
Yeah. yeah. So it, cool. it can it can work. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I guess it just depends on the nature of that particular being too, doesn't it? If it's a oh, sure. if it's a really powerful low vibrational entity, yeah. um, it's much harder to shift, I would imagine. Um, Daryl, uh, uh, a shamanic healer that I know, mentioned to me that um, attachments were like they—they they are an entity. They are, and they are—they are an entity with with a certain level of consciousness. Um, it's not a physical entity, but it's an energetic yep. e- entity, and it does attach itself onto you, and it can attach itself onto you through your maternal or paternal ancestral lines, and so every. Mm-hmm child that's born uh, gets stuck with that same energy succubus that's that's feeding off your negative energy and causing you to feel bad and causing you to um, uh, causing more negative self-talk to happen and once you're in that that spiral of negative self-talk then that's what they like that they're they're getting energy from that um, so it is well, it's not necessarily something that's physical that you can see. They, they are, they are there. They're entities that, and we need to get rid of them if if they're around. Uh, and I, I had one, and I, I, I needed help to get rid of it. Um, mm. It certainly made a difference to how I feel, absolutely. Uh, and I think it's people who suffer from long term depression and anxiety. Uh, I've realised, I'm discovering that perhaps a lot of the time. Part of the reason around that is this something is attached to you, feeding off your negative energy and causing you to create more negative energy in your life. Uh, so it's important to get some help to clear that shit, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Yep. I think you're right. What do you think, Cade? Yeah, it's uh, – okay, I'll go back to the the whole EVP question. It's It's interesting because – I I haven't really experienced any EVPs, but a lot of guests have uh, while talking to me. A lot of listeners have heard of EVPs happening while they're listening to to episodes. And um, I always go back and I, I try to listen because I, they <laughs> the listeners of the shows, are, they're fantastic. They'll give me like the exact time. Oh, you have to listen at oh. 32 minutes and 48 seconds. And I go through and I, I just can't hear anything. Um, but to, to them, they they swear black and blue that they, they're hearing additional voices within the um, within the recordings. Um, I've had uh, Attila, which I think everyone yeah. on this panel here has had Attila on their show. He's a legend. Um, <laughs> he interviewed me uh, for his doco that he's about to release. And while doing the recording, he was telling me, I can hear my children laughing in there. Have you got your kids with you? And I was like, no, man, it's 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> it's just <laughs> you and me. And I was doing this at the um, at the office. And, uh, yeah, heaps and heaps of weird stuff happens at the office. So I'm, I'm convinced it's haunted. Um, but, yeah, he was... 100% certain that he was hearing multiple children laughing and giggling oh. while we were recording. And it blows my mind. And he knows his stuff, right? I mean, like, this is what he does. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he's Mr. Paranormal to yeah. me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a meme I saw. That it just reminded me of it. It's like, there's no more beautiful sound than a baby laughing, unless it's 3 a.m. and you don't have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, yeah. That takes the magic out of it in a hurry. But yeah, I, I think that stuff is amazing. Wow. Were you going to say something, Sarah? No, or you see a baby, or you hear a baby crying while you're out in the bush oh, and, you, and you don't have a baby. <laughs> That's also very scary because, you know, it could be a baby yowie. And where there's a baby yowie, there's a mama yowie and a papa yowie. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. they're probably about nine to ten foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're not happy that you're there probably as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's amazing. There's a lot of – the energetic phenomena I think is is really – it really is mind-numbing. And, and I have to ask you guys as well. Um, there's – what is this? Lots of soldiers bring these attachments. Bring these attachments back from the war – from tragic events yeah 
Um, speaking of attachments, Dr. Manhattan says a lot of soldiers coming back from battles and stuff may bring attachments with them due to the tragic events. That's a good point. I mean, I suppose there's lots of different ways that attachments could happen. And, and yeah, I mean, I believe that they are a consciousness for sure. Um, it's, it's just, I think sometimes, sometimes the words, you know, the, you have an attachment, like it's, you know, somehow got a hook into you. And I suppose it's, it's just figurative, but it's in a, in any case, that's, that's certainly a serious thing. Um, I, I believe that there are these entities that, that do feed off of us or whatever, whatever that is. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't pretend to understand it real well, but the, the, the dynamics of this stuff is absolutely incredible. I have to wonder, um, I was going to ask a question before all of that, and I just totally zipped right out of my own head. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wonder, though, uh, but about the, the phenomena, sometimes I, I'm, I'm curious about the bleed-through that happens with this stuff. And, and I know it's something we've all heard, and many of you out there listening have heard. And, and, it's, and it's something that I address on my shows, and I don't know really what to do with it. And, and it is the similarities. The, there's such a similarity between hauntings and then to abduction scenarios or contact with alien lives and then to cryptids even. There's this non-physical aspect of those. And it, and it really, it's, it's almost maddening the fact that maybe sometimes we're not really sure what a person is dealing with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, very, very frustrating, crazy making, in fact. It, yeah. There's so many different beings out there in that invisible world that we, we actually live in and amongst. There's so many different creatures, beings, entities. Uh, we, we know so little as uh, the human race where we are at this point in our civilization. Uh, we, we have, uh, from what I understand, we've known a lot in the past. Uh, but we know very little now, yeah. uh, so so we're, we're operating in the dark, really. And it, it, it uh, I guess, what what we do with our shows, all three of us, is trying is try and shine a light on what people are experiencing. So maybe we just build on that body of knowledge and build and build and build, gather stories, share those stories, talk about this stuff. Uh, we, we might have more of a, a clearer picture of of what's really going on out there uh, and what it is we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, there's so much, it gets to be kind of a soup. I mean, what do you think of that Cade? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I agree. It's, it's one thing I feel when it comes to, you know, the, the cross pollinization between all the, the different phenomena is that the, the human perception really is everything when it comes to it, because, I'm a I'm a very very big fan of encounters where there's multiple people, so you can get, get different perspectives of, you know, what actually happened in that in that time, and it's really not uncommon that different people will have a completely different retelling of what they encountered in that moment, just because the the human element in all of these encounters is is what makes them so fascinating, so. The the thing is, like, if you were experiencing a orb in your house mm -hmm. or an orb outside, the only difference between those two is the human element of uh, classifying what that is. Because an orb in a house, you might say, hey, that's a ghost, that's a spirit, that's something, you know, a little bit more paranormal in that sense. But if that same, that very same orb was outside, you would say, oh, that's a UFO. So the... The phenomenon may actually be the same regardless of what it is or where it is. Um, but the, the thing that grounds it is the person having that encounter and putting that classification on it because who knows? Who knows what the, these things are? Because even in Yowie encounters, you know, it's not uncommon or Bigfoot encounters. It's not uncommon to hear of orbs flying around before or after experiencing that. So who's to say that it's not? potentially your human subconscious building a memory to who knows potentially cover something that was even more terrifying than seeing a, a Yowie or, or a Bigfoot. It's, it's so incredible. Yeah. Like the whole thing. 
And it, it, it really just, I, I get so happy and, and amazed when there is multiple, multiple people who have had these encounters because you, you get those two different perspectives and it's just, it's, it's great. It's incredible. And when they, when they both match, it's, it's just like, wow, this is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't, I have no words for it. It's just the coolest thing. Like experiencing this stuff is the best. And uh, I'm, I, I live a very vanilla life. I haven't really had too many experiences. <laughs> sure. um, but yeah, I just love the, the whole human element when it comes to, to these things because we're the ones who really decide what we're experiencing at the end of the day. Yeah, no, you're right. That's a great point. I think that, you know, ultimately we're the filter of our experiences. And, and certainly I know that in, in, you know, of course, in, in talking with witnesses, about whatever phenomena they're talking about, it, it's it's it is really cool when when there's a correlation of events, but there's also something uniquely different that someone brings to the table. It's like they'll add something that was important to them as an observer that maybe the other observer didn't see, and and vice versa, you know. And so they cohesively my lights are dimming. That's weird. My uh, cohesively, um, it does <laughs> paint a more robust picture of the phenomena, and I think that. Uh, these anecdotal evidences, I think, are really profoundly important because while we don't have a ghost to study or a Bigfoot to study or a Yahweh or, you know, whatever, name the phenomena, we do have this body of experiences that people bring to the table that at least we can look at and, and kind of come up with, with, I don't know, basically a rudimentary picture of the phenomena and it, and it's real abstract, but at least it's something, you know, uh, you know what I mean, kid? Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. It's, um, the, the big picture, mm -hmm. when you look at all the encounters that you, you would, okay, let's use your podcast for an example, Brandon is like all the people that you've spoken to. I, I would imagine you would almost have this, imaginary red string that you can almost connect multiple episodes together and saying, are these people experiencing the same thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. I get these epiphanies all the time. It's like, Oh, because every time, every time I do, I do talk to people that have experiences. I have these questions filtering through my head and I got this whole pile of them. And then you'll go to someone else and, and they'll say something that goes back to five other 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 stories that I heard that the, the big question mark hanging there and I love those moments because it, it paints it just paints in another dot of the picture and, and you know I, I don't pretend that I'm any closer to really understanding what the nature of this is but I, I just think it's such a profound cat and mouse uh, you know who done it kind of mystery to me and, and you know I don't know it was uh, Captain Mustard with the candlestick <laughs> <laughs> so. I I imagine that um Sarah you get this all the time with the the people who come on your podcast the reports that you do for AYR I can imagine that you almost have a a bloody pinball going this is Yowie number three four two and he's been spotted again and this time he's on the the east coast of Australia <laughs> <laughs> yeah to a certain degree although. Um, I have to admit that my memory isn't that great. So <laughs> I, having done, you know, uh, interview after interview after interview after interview and trying to retain the specifics of each situation and each yaoi that people see, there, I absolutely, Kate, there, there, are, there are some that I go, well, that's, that sounds exactly like this one or this is a really similar situation to, to that one. Um, but I, I suffer from information overload sometimes too, and it's, so I have to re go back. And I often do this in my in my free time, as I go back and re-listen to older interviews that I've done, so that I can. So it jogs my memory, uh, and I and I'm constantly building on on that that body of knowledge. Um, I just noticed Uncle Donnie said something in the chat. He said because we're talking about how this is all a mis mystery for us, and this is all very. Um, it's it's a it's an enigma, and we want to know what's going on, but we don't. And Uncle Donnie said this sort of stuff is part of the, his culture. So mm -hmm. with the the Indigenous Australians, the paranormal world isn't separate to sure. real life. It's part of real life. So all of these beings that we're talking about and that are very mysterious for us um, are not 
so mysterious for for our our original Australians. Mm. Uh, I had a lovely long chat with Uncle Donnie and um, and Auntie Luna the other day. Um, th- that was so so interesting um, from their perspective of how they view Yowies, but also that that other invisible world. And this stuff is it, it, it can still be scary and sure. um, and fascinating and 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 all of that. But it's it's part. It's 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 normal life. It's 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 normal for them. Mm-hmm. It's not in our culture, though. Yeah, um, but you know, and that's the beauty of of these old wisdoms. That, and and it's and it's kind of amazing and awesome that we're revisiting those now. Like we we've been pushed so far ahead with the science that everything was kind of abandoned, and we got into this reckless pace of of this technological world we live in. But we still have those, we're still, there, there's still a part of us that, that we, we're missing. And I think that he's, that's kind of what, what he's saying is that, that we are connected to that world. It's just that we forgot we're a species with amnesia, which I don't know who said that, Graham Hancock or something. But I think, I think it's true. We have this amnesia that, that we are perhaps multidimensional entities. We just forgot that we are and so we live in our in our you know three dimensions our monday through fridays and and we forget to connect to the universe around us or we forgot that we used to or or that the universe connected with us and and you know that that synchronicity and and so i think that that's the beautiful part is that those those messages are still f- here for us we just have to rediscover them by by having this dialogue and and remembering that we are part of this this universal spider web of of life you know we just we think there were these little autonomous you know dust motes in the you know in the in the great sky but we are interconnected and and i think that's the beauty and and probably you know where all of this i've always said that the paranormal is not where things have gone sideways it's the breadcrumbs you know that's it's it's demonstrating something incredibly profound and wonderful maybe that's the you know the whole reason that we have the paranormal is because it's reminding us it's like come on come on hey hey you know <laughs> yes <So. laughs> yes yes it's like come on people wake up yeah <laughs> if, if you're if, if you're separated from that part of our world yeah. you're missing out you're, you're not whole you're not centered you're not grounded you're not there's a piece of your soul missing if you're if you're if you're not connected to to this important part of our world, right. um, and 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 yeah, I, I have heard the same thing that we're that we choose to be incarnated here uh, at whatever time that we're, we're we're born into. But part of the agreement to be incarnated to learn the lessons that we need to learn is that we at, you get amnesia. Yeah. So you. None of you don't remember any of where you came from. That you are in fact a uh, um, a light being, uh, and that this is just an avatar um, for this lifetime. But that you've had many different avatars and you've played many different roles to learn many different things. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 disconnection that many people in in our kind of societies feel, and that's societies that are heavily reliant on on technology on you know, advancement um, technology is is we've kind of gone the wrong way. I think is the message that yeah. maybe that we're being forced to address now, and maybe that's why we are the veil is thinning. We're seeing yowies more often. We're seeing all sorts of things more often. Sure, there, there's it's like there's a concerted effort to wake us all up and go. Hang on, if you really if you really want to know what's going on, you have to tap back into nature. You have to tap back into your your, your real nature and into this invisible world of which you are part. Yeah. Um, if you if you're ignoring it all, then you're, you're you're missing out on something really important. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I think I think we all stand to to grow from all of this as well. Um, there was a, a question by Rachel gets it right, one of our mods. And Rachel always has these amazing questions during every show. So I appreciate the question. Rachel says, do you think ghost boxes are used by spirits that see the hundreds of broadcasts outside of time and piece together phrases like Scrabble tiles making communication with us? 
What do you think, Caden? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so personally, I, I kind of think the, the whole spirit boxes and, and stuff like that, it's, I don't know if that technology is working in the way that it's really supposed to. And I think that's probably why those, those sound bites and that communication is always very, very limited mm. because it's tapping in at just the, on a, on a micro level. And I think it's, it's peering enough into the, into the veal that the veil that it can kind of just capture that little bit, but it can't catch it, get that whole sentence. So sure. um, I don't know if that really answers the question, but I think it's probably the best way to, to think of it is like spirit boxes would probably be one point version 1.0 mm. of communication. And it'd be really interesting to see what a spirit box in 20 years looks like in 50 years when, you know, we potentially have more information or, or knowledge on how do we communicate with that other side? Because it might be that 1% of how that spirit box works is right. And when we figure out the other 99%, we can, who knows what kind of conversations we'll be able to have then. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I have to say that I do like instrument, instrumental trans communication, the ITC, which is spirit boxes and, and like the, the Huff uh, portal and, and things like that where some, you know, I, and I, I've got a version of the, the portal, but it's a homemade version, but it, it uses like um, syllables. And if you ever hear full words, it, it uses databases of syllables. And so it's never a complete word, but sometimes you'll get entire sentences and that's, and that's like, wow, you know, how did that happen? Because, you know, it's just literally the, what do they call them, phonemes or whatever, these, these sounds that we make in our speech, but they're not even, you know, words. So when you get an actual word, that's a really profound. Now, I will say that I, I don't suspend complete logic in, in the face of this because the, the recent, and, and you guys I'm sure are all familiar with this, but the recent advent of those the, the, those crowd chants and you'll see like five very different sentences on the screen. And once you read the sentence, as you're reading the sentence, it sounds exactly like what the crowd is saying. And then they loop it. And then you read the next sentence and it sounds exactly like it goes from like, uh, brush your teeth to I love cheese, you know, and it, and it, and it sounds exactly right each time, but you're reading these very disparate sentences. And so, you got to wonder if some of that isn't, isn't us plugging into it as well. Maybe like making a, a connection that's beyond the physical. And I, I mean, I know that the, the phenomena for, for like spirit boxes and stuff is it's called stochastic resonance. It's just a mouthful of sound, <laughs> but uh, it just basically, you know, means that the spirit's able to take a vibration and create a word out of it. Um, and, and I know that that for many people is just like, Oh, whatever, come on. But I think the power, the, the, the really amazing part of that comes when, and this happened at the Davenport uh, Hotel investigation. I, I had my, my box set up and I was with Charles and we were doing a session. And I was like, I'm going to count. And you, you say the last number. And I went one, two, three. And it said four. And it was like, <laughs> it was really powerful and and it, we both were just like wow that really happened that's you know so i think i think there's merit to it but it, you know i gotta wonder how much of the process do you think we are of this what are your thoughts sarah i i think i think we have incredible powers of manifestation uh mm. so it it wouldn't surprise me that w w we we are the uh, we're the lens and mm. things happen depending on what we're projecting and what we're hearing and what we're putting out, what energy we're putting out, what thoughts we're putting out. Uh, so I, I believe we, and, and this is this is for everyone, everyone on the planet, human beings are very powerful manifestors. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think uh, while I'm not an expert on, on spirit boxes and that kind of thing, I've never used one myself. Um, spirit, ghosts scare the crap out of me. I'm way too cheap <laughs> to go there with that sort of stuff. Um, and I did, I did download an app 
um, it's called Spirit Something that uh, that if you hold up your, your phone and the camera, it it um, shows you a little diagram of where there might be a ghost. That some, it's picking up like a, a figure of something. Uh-huh. Uh, but I'm too scared to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other day my dog was acting a bit weird and I thought, oh, that's his be looking a bit looking towards the doorway and acting a bit strange and being a bit spooked. Um, but I thought, oh, should I get the app out and have a look? And then and then I thought, oh, not if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay. the risk. That's definitely the risk. Once you dive in, you can't unsee this stuff. <laughs> yes, and I don't want them in my house, so yeah. I don't want to even entertain the possibility sure. that they might might be here. I, I, I put an energetic field around my house every day. Uh-huh. I put it around me and I put it around my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and my loved ones and my dogs, and uh, and and nothing gets through that. But yeah. that's again, that's a, that's another example, I guess, of um, we all have that power. Yeah, uh, we all have mm-hmm. that power to 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 protect ourselves, to pre- to to create an energetic field around us. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. and that could be why I don't I don't see ghosts. Um, True. Is is because I'm. Nah, no way. <laughs> yeah, I don't want yeah. them. To hear me. I, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that one, there, Sarah. Because I get a lot of people who who ask me, like, "Oh, aren't you scared of like this stuff happening to you and your and your family?" And I always just say no because it's it's the same thing. I'm just putting out too much like positive energy to be like, "Don't come in my life. Too busy to deal with you right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe later on." But right okay. now, you can't do it. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. I, and I'm a, I generally try and stay a, a high vibe, positive, kind hearted <clears throat> vibe as well. So, um, you know, I'm human and everyone has bad days, but uh, I generally am a high vibrational person anyway. So it right. could be yeah. that, um, it could be that, or, or it's simply my. My abject terror at the thought of at the thought of a ghost or an entity, an evil ghost in my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's enough to, to the the roller door is boom shut. <laughs> Not coming in here. <laughs> what, what about you, Brent? Like, what's your your thoughts on that? Like, do people kind of ask you that same question as well? Of, aren't you worried you're going to invite this in your house? No, well, I've had plenty of experiences here. Um, I literally the door's had, wide open at the yeah, at Brent's place. Yeah, I mean, literally, I and I've I do try to be cognizant of it. Like I I do cleanse and sage around here quite a bit. But we've had some weird things happen here. Some really crazy things happen in this house, and and I I believe well this house has a history though too, and I didn't know that when we moved in, but we started having activity. Uh, even before I dug, started doing the show here, and uh, that's you know that was um, not unusual to me because I have lived in haunted houses prior to this, and I don't mean like they were always active, but there was times a year that the activity happened, and so you know it it wasn't ever I didn't think dangerous or anything, and I didn't get the feeling that it was here uh, for the most part, but I I do uh, make it a, a point to regularly you know, burn frankincense and sage and sweet grass and, and of course, you know, admonishing dark things to not be here because you're not allowed and, and uh, cleansing. And, and it, it seems to, for the most part, sometimes I get a little, uh, little lazy about it and don't do it as often and then things can start happening. But, uh, here, you know, here's the other part of it, though. I, I think that there's, there is power in what you're saying, though, Sarah, because if, if you say you, you don't... You just don't want to see it. You don't want it to, to be a part of your world. I think that's really, truly a powerful uh, way of shielding from it because there's many parapsychologists over the years who've said you just ignore it, just no matter what. You don't even acknowledge it. And, uh, you know, if it's like a, a more of a, a trickster kind of thing or, or just being a, a, a bit of a, a pain in the butt, just ignoring it, they'll, they'll kind of get tired and allegedly go, go on with whatever they're doing. But I do think, uh, you know, the, one of the things that I worry about is, is apps like that because uh, I've talked to m- many people that have had some real problematic hauntings and they're like, yeah, we got this activity here. And so I started doing EVP sessions with it. I'm like, oh, because I do believe that by doing that, 
you're, you are encouraging or giving permission for a spirit to express yeah. itself in your space. And if you don't want that activity to happen, you, you, I, I think doing EVP sessions or, or using a ghost app and, you know, trying to see things, I think it really does, like, because there does seem to be something about hauntings start out very gradually. They don't start out with, you know, your dishes are flying out of the, out of the cupboard. It's like, you know, where's my keys? I know I put them down here. And then the next thing you know, you know, a while later, your furniture's moving, but it's, it's a very gradual progress. And I think that fear, fear is a big part of, of surrender and, and allowing that activity to happen. Because when you're afraid, you are basically acquiescing to it. You're, you're basically letting this thing have control because you, you expressing fear. Whereas that's probably the time where you really need to, you know, put the hammer down and say, you get the hell out. This is not where you live. You're not welcome here. And, uh, you know, to do that. But, but I think that when people, when people do, and I, and I know there are people that have all kinds of ideas. These are just mine and I don't pretend to be right or even have an, any clue. But I think when you do investigate these things, even because you just want to understand what's going on in your house, you are kind of green lighting it in an effect. And, uh, in progressing the the activity would you guys agree with that sarah yeah absolutely absolutely you're, you're green lighting it um i say to myself i say well say to myself but i say it out to the universe and and the world around me every day um i am a sovereign being of light mm. and i do not consent to any energy any entity coming into my sphere that does not have my highest interests at heart, my best interests at heart. Uh, and I do it every day. Um, so, th I mean, that maybe that's why I, that's why I, I don't get paranormal activity in, in, in my home um, because I, I'm, I'm very firm about, <laughs> about who's allowed in my sphere and who's not. Um, and I think everyone can do that, though. It's not it, – everyone has that ability – uh, and, and it's just about being. Uh, I'm noticing a few people in the comments saying same thing. You you, you have to be f strong about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, someone asked said, "Is there a ghost app?" I'll just tell you what it is. Not that I'm really <laughs> encouraging people to do it, but <laughs> the ghost the, the app is. If you want to, just it's like playing with a Ouija board. Just be careful. So um, don't don't smoke crack. But here's where you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a lighter, yeah. Um, it's uh, Ghost Tube SLS, it's oh. called. Ghost Tube, T-U-B-E, Ghost Tube SLS. Mm. Um, actually, I was watching, I might have even been watching, it was one of one of yours and my listeners, Cade, uh, Wendy, who, who I saw had that app. She posted something on, on your Facebook page and... Uh, I thought, oh, that looks really interesting. That's cool. But when I got it, I thought, oh, <laughs> maybe not. I think I'd rather not see them. <laughs> oh, this is so you get, you, so you don't get, you don't get ghost activity in your house, Kate. Only when I talk to Attila. <laughs> right. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I love talking to Attila and I hate talking to Attila because <laughs> Attila conversations become very expensive because I've gone, we, we basically all use the same recording equipment. Mm -hmm. I've gone through three recorders. Ooh. Two of them failed when talking to Attila. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very weird. Very weird. And um, I sent them back for um, repair and yeah, they just didn't know what was wrong with it. They just gave me brand new ones. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hopefully, right. uh, maybe they maybe they became haunted little podcast machines, and I'm <laughs> I've passed them on to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was actually thinking of getting him on my show or asking if he would come on my show soon because he's got his um his latest documentary coming out shortly. But Ooh. maybe I better not. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's always I it's always fun, but yeah, weird stuff always happens because um, he was having lots and lots of weird activity when the first one died. Like the the screen was like flickering and changing all over the place. Um, things that I didn't even think were possible were happening on the machine, and I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. Mm. Um, but yeah, just so many weird things like taps on the walls, taps on the windows. It's um, it's a very fun. Spooky time. 
<laughs> <laughs> Sounds looks lovely. Um, we we do have a, a question here. It's kind of changing uh, changing the gears, but it's from Rachel. Gets it right. Says, uh, and it, "Do you, theory about black eyed kids? Could they be a vessel?" Tulpa manifested by a dark force guided to cause harm to their new potential victims. They may be an extension of a master controller. Ooh. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in on this. Yeah, please. Good. Cause I've never had a black answer. kid before, like <laughs> encounter here in Australia. I um, honestly feel like this is a phenomenon that would only happen in, in the United States because I have not heard a single encounter. Oh, at all of a black eyed kid happening in Australia at all. That's good. You don't want them. <laughs> they are no I fun. Anything scarier than that. Yeah. That would be terrifying. It, it is. It's a diabolical thing. And, and certainly the, the, there isn't a ton of, of material about them out there or claims and even with that, can you believe every one of them? Probably not. I mean, most most likely they're just creative writing in a lot of cases. But if they yeah. are real, um, there the interesting part of it is is that there does seem to be some historical precedence in folklore and such for for black eyed people or kids or whatever. Um, that's been there's I just interviewed a demonologist that uh, talked about. The that's you know he in the discussions he's had with other uh, well, actually he's an exorcist but and the, a demonologist as well I suppose by extension but he's a Catholic priest and uh, he has apparently talked to exorcists that have seen people's eyes go entirely black as well as turning into like the snake slits and such and that oh. that's got to be all kinds of creepy but. Is it, you know, that, that would play, I guess, into what Rachel's saying. If Is it, you know, again, I, I think tulpas are always, they're always suspect in a lot of this stuff because I, I do believe that sometimes the paranormal can be a manifestation of ourself, maybe some part of us that we don't, we don't engage or we, we, we ignore, we stuff away. Of, most certainly poltergeist phenomena seems to be attached to, you know, uh, well, mostly prepubescent or pubescent girls, but going through those, those enormous changes and all of a sudden, you know, things are going crazy. And, and there, it's usually a very short-lived phenomenon, but it would seem to suggest that we have the ability to project this stuff out. Um, for, for people dealing with poltergeists, I guess they just hit a trigger or whatever. And, and that's what happened. But do you guys think that, that tulpas could very well be at least some of what we're talking about here? I'll let you answer that, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, to be honest, I'm not too sure. Like I, I think we have the ability, and we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, well, at least Sarah did. Is that us as humans, we have the ability to manifest a lot of things, and I think the you know the human consciousness is incredibly powerful. Um, it's personally, I think the the human consciousness is what makes us so interesting to to aliens. I think that's why aliens would be coming to Earth, um, but. With the with our power of our consciousness, I think it can actually project into reality and create things. It can manifest things. So you know, in in moments of high danger, of high emotion, of um, high conflict, I think this is where spirits can or entities can to attach to to people or, or to certain things, and mm -hmm. this is where we can manifest this stuff. So um, I don't know if that answers that question or not, but um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I think about that, that whole thing, because yeah, I think the, the human consciousness is incredibly powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I, I definitely do. Did you have any thoughts Sarah? Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I think we're, and I, I have a feeling that a lot of the, a lot of the, 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 the way our society has been constructed in, in that we, you know, so many people work 
such long hours, Monday to Friday. It's a grind. They often don't like what they're doing. Um, you're so destroyed by the time you get home. You just flick on the TV um, and and vegetate for the evening or, or over the weekend. And I, I it's dumbing us down. And mm. I think we spend so much of our time completely disconnected from our spirits and from our imaginations, from from the other world, uh, we 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 don't manifest the best things that we we we're not aware of one that power and we're not using it so we're not you know we're we're it's just stagnating and atrophying in a way mm-hmm. um, so so I, I think yeah I, I agree we have incredible powers of manifestation um, our imaginations are, are limitless but I don't think we our lifestyles are always geared up to to support that and so we end up manifesting a life that's not a happy life um we yeah, end up manifesting evil, evil entities and yeah go go kate yeah no i agree i think it's um we we live a very distracted life these days and you just have to honestly look at anyone out in public they are glued to their phones and <laughs> reality is completely different to to what it was 20 years ago it's people are, are working longer. People are working not necessarily harder, but, you know, there's there's less, I guess, free time because we are constantly taking in information and influence and opinions almost every second of the day with the, the you know, the access to social media because the, the thing that you're doing in your free time is just consuming more. And consuming more opinions and consuming more more data, it's it's so easy to be distracted in this in this modern day in this modern age. And it doesn't surprise me that these things can just manifest by accident because you're not paying attention to what you're doing. It's so easy to go down those uh, those slippery slopes of, you know, oh, the world's against me and the world hates me, and then bad things start happening to you because you're manifesting that. Yeah, good point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, yeah. I think that I think that what, what when I was saying earlier like we we are you know certainly capable of a lot more and and I think everybody here agrees with that. Um we we all seem to be aware that we are more than just these these meat suits that we're running around in. Um in our nature is much more robust and and magnificent, but we've we've been so conditioned to live in these in, in these shells and in our in our five senses. That, that, you know, everything else, well, <laughs> that and our calcified pineal glands, I guess, doesn't <laughs> probably help. But, yeah, we got a lot of work to do for sure. But I, I think this stuff is, is magnificent in that it, it, it keeps us looking. Because I, I think what Cade's saying is right. We're, we're constantly being encouraged to look for the next news story or the check of the updates on what's going on in, in any number of tragedies around the world. And, uh, and it keeps us in this state of consumption. But I, I think that we are certainly capable of so much more. It's just we've been, we've been sold a, a bill of goods on that one. So I, I think that's, that's pretty amazing. Now, earlier, Cade, I wanted to get back to this a little bit because you mentioned, you, you touched on this a little bit when we first started the show, and that is uh, the, the disclosure. So... Do you expect that someday all the governments of the world are just going to say, hey, guess what? There are UFOs. They're here visiting. We don't know what they are, but, uh, you know, buy extra bread. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> uh, buy extra toilet paper. Um, <laughs> that's for pandemics. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, Wrong and- I don't know if the government's going to have a choice at the end of the day because I think the there's so many people out there doing genuine good work in that whole field and a lot of people in um, positions of power uh, really taking the I guess the 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 leaps forward in that that the government has to keep up or they're going to lose control of that situation. Mm. So for in the sense of are we going to get disclosure? Probably. What 
what that looks like, I have no idea. Um, personally, I think we've already kind of got a sense of disclosure going on with the the US government really coming out and saying, yeah, you know, UFOs are real. We don't know what they are. There's every chance that these are off-world vehicles. Um, in my opinion, you know, that really kind of says everything that it needs to to say. Um the the fact that the and I don't know if this has been pushed through. I think it has, but your senate is putting through a whistleblower. Um, uh, I, I I don't really know the terminology for it, but basically the the green lighting it to be safe for whistleblowers to come forward with UFO encounters and UFO reports and things like that. So we could be seeing highly decorated military personnel coming forward any time now, mm. saying, "Hey, this is what I experienced." This was a real life encounter that that happened to, to me and my squad. Here's all the information. Here's all the reports on it. So, yeah, I think I think the 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 government really doesn't get a say in in disclosure anymore because we're going to get it from left, right, and center. We're going to get it from the general public. We're going to get it from people in power, and we're going to get it from uh, people in um, those high levels of military that are going to come forward because it's going to be a safe place for them. Sure. Uh, but it is it is kind of funny um, that that suddenly this knowledge has started coming forward, even without that. I mean, it started kind of hemorrhaging through with the, you know, the of course, the, the Tic Tac videos and all of that. Um, I, it, I think I think honestly that that was the disclosure that that we can expect. Like any time a, a, a military entity says, well, you had these things buzzing the ship. We don't know what they are. You know, I, I think that's just as well as saying there's little green men on the moon. You know, I mean, it, it's it's it seems to be that once that happened, it really did kind of crack the seal on this, and and it was really kind of observably funny in that prior to that, prior to that one admission, you'd see the news reports, and and it happens about Bigfoot reports too. It's just this this comical footnote. It's like, well, we're going to go over to Jim who's over in Bucks uh, County yeah. where people saw a flying saucer, you know, and they, <laughs> they do it in this, this chuckling demeaning manner, but suddenly now those same With anchors are like, music backtrack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And suddenly now those same anchors are like, yeah, we're going to go to Jim who's talking about people seeing lights over in the sky in Bucks County. <laughs> so it, it, it's redefined, the delivery of that information for whatever that's worth. But um, do you think that disc disclosure is even really necessary past that point though? Like Sarah, do you think that we need a government acknowledgement anymore? Um, I personally don't. I, I, I guess I don't really care what other people think. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not that fussed. It's the same. It's the same way I feel um, about all of this stuff. I, I, I used to really want to push for official recognition of all of these things, but in my area of expertise, official recognition of the Yowie and of Bigfoot, that that's what I wanted to prove to the world. Um, I, I, I feel now a little bit more, and the same with for UFO disclosure, um, it'd be nice if they acknowledged it. So people, society, the people who are seeing them don't, aren't traumatised thinking that they're crazy or something that's happened and that they must be delusional or they must, you know. So to be official recognition disclosure would be good in that sense. But on the other hand, who cares what the government thinks anyway? Like <laughs> they just need to get on with running the country yeah. um, and leave, leave the important stuff to us, <laughs> Yeah. you know. But I did hear the other day, I've been hearing this recently, that uh, some of the people who are pushing for disclosure are controlled opposition and the whole but the whole purpose behind UFO alien disclosure is to set up a fake alien invasion mm. that fear and panic in society and enables then society to be more easily controlled and manipulated and and this is being orchestrated by um, some very elite group of a cabal of people um, yeah i have you guys heard of that go ahead okay yeah i um i love conspiracy theories i <laughs> i love them but i never believe them 
because <laughs> I think conspiracy theories can be like super dangerous, um, especially for for those who are too too willing to believe. Um, and and social media is like a bloody great example of that. You look at like anyone's uncle or auntie on on Facebook; they're the number one conspiracy theorists usually going around. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's <laughs> to be honest, I think like I, I, I'm all for conspiracy theories like that, but I think honestly, the governments really have no idea yeah. and they're probably just almost as clueless as us at the end of the day. Um, like I'm sure there's a handful of, you know, highly selected people who, who know the, the real truth and, you know, they're always a step ahead. Um, but yeah, I don't know if the the whole um, conspiracy theory that they're using it to control us would would work because I mean we kind of just went through a a huge world pandemic. I can't say the word on YouTube because I don't want <laughs> friends' <laughs> uh, channel to get demonetized. Um, but that that really did show like how ineffective a world under control would be. So to say, especially here in Australia. <laughs> you know, I. Yeah, major toilet paper shortages everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's people now that are sitting on garages full of toilet paper, not sure what to do with them. <laughs> so, Eating lots of Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I, I do have to, to ask you guys uh, do you think that there is a, a risk? from these beings from the stars or from wherever they come from? I mean, do you, the, of course that is, the, I, I, let me know what you think. I, I guess, do you think that there's a risk, Sarah? Uh, yes. In that there are good and bad beings, uh, throughout our universe, including on our planet. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're already here. I don't think uh, from what I understand, I'm not an expert, but, um, from what I understand, uh, the human race was created by aliens. There are aliens living am living amongst us that that look human but aren't really, um, and some of them feed off us, whether it be energetically or, or or other other ways. They take from us, and they want something from us, or they want something from our planet. Mm -hmm. um, so, definitely, we should always be alert. Uh, but not alarmed, <laughs> we should always be alert that someone is trying to, that, that there are good forces and bad forces. So to, to answer your question, Brent, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that okay. they're all um, they're all benevolent beings that have our best interests at heart. Sure. What do you think, Cade? Yeah, I agree 100%. I think it would be uh, borderline foolish to, to think that, you know, every colony from space if that is where they're coming from um is always going to be peaceful you just have to to really look at human history to see how that that kind of plays out for millennia um and you know people will probably argue that yeah but aliens will be so much more advanced than us in, in in every single way, including the the sense of they don't need to dominate us. We might just be ants to them. Sure. Um, but again, you know that's that's complete speculation. And you know, you at the end of the day, those those people have no idea. They're guessing. It's a wish. It's a great wish. I, I want that wish too, <laughs> because I'd hate for aliens to come down to Earth and you know take us over. You know, we all work too hard for what we have and the life that we've got to have it just taken away by space assholes. Um, <laughs> but suck. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it totally suck. It would be the worst thing ever. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I think, you know, you, you really have to always expect that if something's coming from somewhere else, that there's always a chance that uh, they're, they're coming for ill reasons. I mean, uh, a duck could want to take you out for the sake of it. You know, ducks are great creatures, but geez, you get a duck on a bad day, it'll take you down. <laughs> Especially if it's a goose. They're serious. Yeah. They're seriously scary geese. <laughs> Kate, did you need to talk? Do you, do you want to share? <laughs> uh, no, no, I... <laughs> yeah, geese are assholes too. <laughs> Oh, no. Go on, Phil. Okay, Phil. <laughs> no, no, to self. What, what, what about you, Brent? What do you think of it? 
I, I think that that if my my belief is that this is these these are super super advanced races. I think that they are, you know, possibly millions of years more advanced than us. You know, the whole, the whole idea, you know, we don't know how advanced they are from where we are, but knowing what we can observe that they do, it's well beyond what we're capable of as far as I know. Uh, then, of course, there's the whole, are there reverse engineered aircraft or whatever? Maybe. But the thing is, is my, my big contention with it is, if these are super advanced races, why wouldn't they have already done this? Well, I mean, they could have uh, taken over the entire planet in the 1800s with, you know, with probably three vehicles. You know, they could have just come and, and scared everybody into oblivion and, and done it. Why, why are they waiting till we have bigger sticks to use against them, you know? So my, my, my question is this, why, why did they, if they are really bent on our destruction and if they are actually here, why are they waiting? Why are they waiting until more information comes out? And, you know, because I'm sure they, they would know that awareness is powerful. And, and by us having awareness and a growing understanding, um, you know, we become more dangerous. So that's what I don't understand. Um, and I'm not saying they couldn't be or there couldn't be some that are. Um, whether there's some intergalactic council that people, some people have suggested that they keep it all in band, but, you know, checks and balances, or if they're just here, maybe we're just the the cosmic Seven Eleven. They just kind of swing through and, you know, go to the <laughs> look at the wildlife and, uh, you know, fill up the tank and head out. I don't know. It's just, I guess I don't know for sure, but it seems to me that if if they wanted to wipe us out, there's not a darn thing we could do. You know, we would just be wiped out. So, I, I have to believe there's something else going on here. Um, hopefully that, you know, if we are indeed like, uh, as suggested, we are, we, are we an engineered race? Well, then they made us if that's the case. And, and obviously they kept us around. So there must be some, some higher purpose for all, for all of it. If that is indeed the truth. And I, I don't pretend to know, but those are my thoughts, I guess, in a, in a bucket, <laughs> I can't say in a nutshell, cause I haven't shut up for about five minutes here, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> just that was one big nut. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even touch that. You know that. I can't even do anything with that now. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> I, I, don't think they, I don't think they want to destroy us. I think that that might be, uh, and these are just my thoughts again, I, I'm not, I don't think they necessarily want to destroy us. They must be getting something from us or from sure. our planet. That sure. they, but they like keeping us um submissive and subjugated and, and, and under their thumb. There, there is, as you mentioned, I, I also have heard talk of a galactic federation who, who keep everything under control in the universe and they wouldn't allow uh, alien races who meant us any harm to be able to come here and, and, and rape and pillage and, and do whatever they want. There are forces for good that are preventing preventing them from doing that sure um i mean yeah i mean if they wanted yeah if they could destroy us they could quite easily have done that and, and you've got a very good point brent I mean, yeah. why would they wait until you know until we've got bigger sticks yeah. <laughs> get us yeah they could have got us you know, several tens of thousands of years ago right. and wiped us all out then before before we had nuclear weapons. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's the curiosity about it, and, and I don't know. Now, Kate, I know you've, you've had a sighting yourself, and, of course, I have. Sarah, have you? Uh, UFOs? Yeah, yeah. I, I did. I have had one, okay. uh, and I was a young girl, uh, maybe about 15, um, 14 or 15, and I was riding my bike um, home with some friends near a, a sporting field, an oval, and we noticed up in the sky something that was travelling across the sky in the shape of a cigar that had lights all around the edge of it that seemed to be kind of turning around like like, it was almost like it was a disc shape, but you could only see the side and there were lights mm. moving around as though the, the lights were moving around. It made no sound, um, wasn't an aeroplane, um, was travelling not super fast, but, you know, 
sort of mm, ac- across the sky. Mm-hmm. Um, not, I, I find it really hard to estimate distances, particularly sure. in the sky. So I've got no idea how high it was. But it was. We all saw it. We all didn't know what it was. Uh, it wasn't a weather balloon. It wasn't anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I have seen something like that. And my brother saw something very similar too. Um, he was scared enough to uh, jump off his push bike. Um, this is another occasion, but he jumped off his bike and hid underneath a car, oh, a parked wow. car, because he was wow. so frightened of what he saw. Yeah. Um, so yes, that's I have seen one, but um, yeah, it was a long it was a long time ago. I'm ready for another one. I'd like to see another <laughs> one if the if if the aliens are listening. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing another one. So you can show show yourselves to me if you like. I'm ready. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that probably the number of people that are seeing these things is growing. I think this is one of the phenomena that I think seems to be pretty pretty fair to say that it, that whatever's going on, there seems to be a lot more activity or people come. Well, I mean, obviously people are coming forward, but there really is more going on. I think in the skies than ever before. Would you guys agree, Cade? Yeah, absolutely. And and not only is there more activity going on, I think there's just more eyes on the sky now. Um, I think a lot more people are obviously aware of what UFOs are. Um, it still boggles my mind how it's not the biggest news story every night. Right. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think there's just way more public awareness about it. There's way less stigma about it. And uh, yeah, I think genuinely people are just looking in the skies more now because if uh, if you're more open to, to seeing a UFO, uh, you're who knows you might you might actually just wish one into existence yeah. if you're into ce5 and all of that <laughs> oh yeah isn't that steven greer's thing ce5 yeah yeah nice well played sir <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it is I, i've actually been keen to try that i know gary lynn my my ayr team buddy um he he uh does he gets together with people and and does the CE5 like, oh, cool. that contact they meditate together and uh, he's had some interesting results I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you about them off the top of my head but sure. uh, you should get, get Gary to tell tell you uh, his experiences one day um, so yeah there, there's definitely there's there's people out there attempting contact um, and I wouldn't mind having a go at that myself but I do I did talk to um, um, Damien Douglas, who runs a C5 and alien focused groups in in Brisbane, I think, or or, or Gold Coast near Gary, and uh, he he told me of of an experience that he and his wife had, where they, along with a, a large group of people from all around the world, were meditating and attempting CE5, mm. and a very um, powerful strange being manifested itself uh, to Damien's wife and to other people. And it was actually quite a dangerous situation. Um, oh. I, I, yeah, it, w- it wasn't a good being. It was it was a bad being. And, and so you have to be, I think, like with any of this stuff, you have to be really careful who you summon um, and, and wh- what, it, what you need to be very clear what your intentions are and who you're actually intending on making contact with because uh, it can go it can go wrong i suppose i never thought about that but i guess i guess if you're if you're calling out there blindly then it's kind of like a ouija board at that point right like you're just calling whoever's answering and you don't know who's picking up the phone wow i'd never thought about yeah. that you're right i guess you'd have to have a pretty clear objective and and hopefully you know they say energy follows intention so that would help to guide it or steer it at least but wow that's that's phenomenal. Did you did you get a description of that, or did you hear what it looked like? Uh, I, I'd have to. I can't remember now. I spoke sure. to him quite some time ago. Um, I can, I can, I can look it up and let you know. I'd have sure. to, I'd have to double check and 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 re-listen to that interview again to let you know. Well, the, the, you know, the reason I'm I'm wondering is because there are the the claims, of course, that they're they're here, and that not only are just some here, lots of them are here from different reaches of, of the galaxy, allegedly, and and I find that really interesting. Uh, I I guess they're all 
able to blend in just fine through whatever maybe technology or, or psychic overpowering of our senses or something. But, you know, it just makes you wonder <laughs> how much are we missing here? You know, that's the part that really boggles my mind with all of this. It's like every time we get into this stuff, it's like, there's more stuff we don't know. Oh, okay. We don't know about that too. Wow. You know, we're, we're, we're like, we're like the window, window lickers of the universe here or something, you know, it's like, what yeah. in God's name. I don't know. It's it. And that's, do you think that there are many different races presently here? Whoever wants to I, feel that. I suspect so. Okay. I was talking to someone when I was buying my, my new computer recently. Uh, I was talking to the salesman and he, and this is in a, a tech shop, and he was giving me a contact number of someone, of a, of a computer technician, a computer geek who could set my new computer up with all the stuff that I needed on it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he said, this guy is so strange that, he, he said he was looking at him once and talking computer tech stuff and this guy's eyes, like his face seemed to change. He looked reptilian for, for a moment. Oh, um, yeah. I've, I've heard reports from several different people of encounters where they're talking to someone and that person's face for just a split second turns into something else oh. <laughs> um, that, that doesn't look human. So... Yeah, I, I I definitely think they're they're amongst us. If if those reports are anything to go on, um, I did hear someone say recently that the royal the British royal family are all reptilians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I don't know how how seriously to take that or not. But apparently the Queen's an ancient shape shape shifting entity. Um, I went okay, right. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't how, know. How pissed would you be with your partner if you found out that they were actually an alien and just hid it from you forever? <laughs> 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 I, yeah, that would be that would be a tough one to get over. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and another story. Some, someone, well, it was along the same lines. There was a lady whose husband. She discovered that her husband she suspected he was an alien like he would he would walk out of the door and come back in but he'd be his eye color would change or his height would change um (laughs) yeah yes really really spooky strange stuff happening in the mirror um (laughs) lots of very strange things happened to this lady and 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 she she'd she actually reached out to to dean harrison um, he tells that story really well. Um, but there, there were lots of very strange things that this woman reported that, you, you, yeah, her, hus- her husband and the son were both aliens, I, she thinks. Oh, wow. That's wow. a, that's a yeah. tough one. Okay, because so, here's, here's the thing. If they are here, would they be intermingling with us? Maybe. I, I mean, there, there's certainly got to be a possibility about that. But how bizarre does that sound just to hear that right now? I mean, it's. Just to hear that, I'm thinking, I mean, the, looking at it from the paranormal interested part of me and then the logical part of me are, are like, uh, they're like having a thumb war right now going, what do you do with this? I mean, that certainly sounds like somebody's, uh, it, I don't know, I don't want to ever put anybody down because, of course, if they if they believe that they're having this experience, then that experience is very real to them. And that's, of course, very, very scary. And, and I, I don't know, I'm, but then again, how do you, how do you quantify that? How do you, how do you objectively look at that without thinking, well, I mean, we don't really know the person, so you don't know what is she dealing with and what, is there a history of issues in her family that, you know, and, and so all of these real tragic things start coming to mind because initially I'm thinking, oh my God, that must be a, a you know, really bizarre, wild thing, but first of all, what if it is real? And then second of all, what if it's a, a mental illness? And then that's very sad, you know, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's kind of the juggling yeah. match that we're all in here because we, we are, it's incumbent upon us to take these, these claims. And, and quite honestly, even my own stories, I, I, for a long time, I wouldn't tell anybody because it just sounds like, well, who the hell's going to believe this? You know, mm-hmm. what objective person is going to hear what I'm saying and buy into it? 
And, and yet I've been met with very understanding people every time I've shared my experiences. I'm very grateful for that. But this woman is obviously very tormented by whatever's going on. And, and so you have this, 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 the scales going on. Well, is it, is it legitimate or is, is something really wrong happening for this woman? And, you know, what do you do with it? And that's, I guess, the hard part. With, yeah. It's a balance. Yeah. And I, I go into the same mindset, actually. It's because you, you really do have to because, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, mental illness is, you know, highly connected to a lot of the topics that we do talk about. And it, you have to take a, a very serious approach to it in, in that sense there because of genuine real life implications that come from these types of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but then my mind also goes to really, really dumb areas like, um, imagine traveling all the way across the cosmos and you're a human who has a job in a warehouse that just pushes paper around all day, hypothetically, like how, how does that life change happen to you? Like you go from traveling the stars to traveling the roads down to a warehouse <laughs> scrubbing your animals or something yeah it's like you drew the short straw that guy drew the short straw <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah i don't know it's yeah yeah, yeah. what would be the point that's yeah. true yeah i guess i i don't know it's that's the hard part that's the juggling juggling match of all of this because i think we have to as having our own respective shows, you have to come at it with, with compassionate ear because I, I'm not fit to judge whether that person is being legitimate or not, but it's a heck of a heck of a claim. And, that, and that's the other side of it because if, if ever I was sharing my stories and somebody went, okay, time for your meds, you know, you, you've gone, you got to get some, get some rest or something, but I wouldn't blame them because it's hard to go from, you know, basically zero to 120, you know, because you're, you're going from the normal to the absolutely abnormal. And, and that's a, that's a hell of a journey for anybody to take. And so uh, I do believe that the, we've come a long way in that regard though, that we, we, there is a much more willingness among people to at least have these discussions now, which I think is powerful and important, but, but it is the hard part of it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And, you th and I start to think, okay, so how, how much of what's considered mental illness uh, and psychiatric diseases and conditions, how much of that is actually this person is experiencing things that we can't explain? It's not that they're, they, they're, they have schizophrenia, for example, or, or they're, they're having psychotic delusions. Um, I st I've started to think, Okay, how much are we misdiagnosing as mental health issues yes. and, and, and medicating people for that um, when really something else altogether is going on and that person doesn't need to be medicated at all. That's actually making them worse. Yeah, uh, We just don't understand what's actually happening to them. Yep. And that, that really leads into like what I, I said like at the start of the conversation. Like I, someone in the chat said, I had no idea what Kate was talking about when I said this, but the whole paranormal but happening on a psychic level just to you yeah. no one else in your house experiences this so you know by yourself you're freaking out over things that appear to you but aren't appearing to anyone else and you know those are all the classic tropes of going off the spectrum you know you're going you're losing your mind essentially right yeah that's that's a, a huge thing because I, I think we've all heard the stories of, of people being in groups, like even, even paranormal investigating. It's like, oh, my God, did you hear that woman scream? And everyone else is like, no. And, and, <laughs> and, and, it, I, and I do think that the interesting thing is that's one of those phenomena that seems to jump all of the, all of the different phenomena. Is, that, is, the, is, it, is it a telepathy? Is it that spirits are telepathic and can project that into our head? The Bigfoot mind speak is another example of, well, is that, you know, is that able to be projected to us? And then the UFOs, uh, the, the people believe that they're communicating telepathically with these beings. So that seems to be a real common thread through all of this phenomena is that it can be aimed, I guess, and it can be given to just one person, but you're right. 
what does that one person look like then to the rest of the people that aren't experiencing it? I've often wondered and, and, and tragically wondered how many asylums are, are occupied by people who have just been tormented by something dark, you know, but yeah. of course it looks like madness because nobody else can understand that situation. That's, yeah. that's yeah. horrible. Ooh. Yeah. And it was such a, a mind blowing moment for me when, you know, that I got educated about this because it's that exactly what you just covered there, Brent. It's how many people have been affected in such a poor way and treated in a poor way because of this. And mm -hmm. their complete lives are ruined because no one else is experiencing what they're seeing. Yeah. I mean, think exactly. of Exactly. Go ahead, Sarah. Oh, I was just going to add, I interviewed someone who saw... Uh, he was out camping with his with a group of friends and he saw he he sort of moved off to one side to go to the toilet and um, looked up at the sky and this massive UFO that took up the whole sky appears to him sort of he sees one light and then then this circle of lights in the in the shape of like a C sparks up and then a, a, an inner circle of red light sparks up, and he said it was as as huge as a rainbow, like a massive thing. Wow! And the, and, and and no one else saw it. He yelled out to these guys, "Hey, did you are you looking? Look at this! Look at this!" They couldn't hear him, and they didn't see it. Wow! So you know, and he's he I, I believed him. I, I sure. And he he's he's not he's not um, someone who's been diagnosed with a mental illness or, or anything like that, just a, a normal normal guy like you like you and I and like, like all of us. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot. Well, even, even uh, um, someone was telling me the other day that they could see orbs but that their husband didn't see them, didn't see them at the same time. She's like, yeah, it's right there. And he's like, no, what do you mean, you idiot? There's nothing there. So it would it's it would be a particular um, it would be a heavy burden if, you, if if you're seeing and experiencing things that like that that you can't explain, yeah, um, yeah. but that but and and other people are right there and they're not experiencing the same thing at the same time. It would be a, a, a very distressing and confusing uh, experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think so too, and and I I think about like uh, child psychics and stuff and how how tormented a lot of them are. And, and of course, the movie The Sixth Sense was a, a dramatization of, about, of that, but I don't think it was much of, an, of, a, of a stretch, you know, because just think as adults how, how unnerving and incredible these events are and then, and then impose that on the mind of a child. And, and what do they endure? These, like Jazz, I'm sure, is, understands exactly that was her experience, I'm sure. Uh, and Deb and, and so many others. Uh, I've you know only seen ghosts myself one time, like a real full body manifestation one time. But most of the most of the activity that I've experienced has been things happening around me, and and of course the empathy, feeling that presence around. But but yeah, that's got to be a horrible thing. Wow, incredible. Yeah, and I do know someone who I interviewed a few times. Um, who, who was diagnosed with a, a psychiatric illness and was medicated for it and uh, it, it had it ended up not being uh, not not having a psychiatric illness um, so luckily he was able to find uh, spiritual guides and healers who could help him get off the, the antipsychotic medication that, that he was was taking um, and helped him deal with uh, helped him normalize a bit and deal with all the weird stuff that would happen to him. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's happened a lot, mm. uh, which, is, which is even more more reason why uh, why the work that you that all three of us do is really important because we we might we might be instrumental in helping even if it's just helping one person who who. Sure might have ended up going down that path of being institutionalized, being drugged out up to the eyeballs by, by things that don't make them feel well and they can't, you know, function as a, as a normal human being. Um, if, we can, if we can prevent just that happening to at least one person, um, that would be job done. 
as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. I, you know, I, and I, I certainly, that's one thing I do love about this is that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are given the opportunities to be helpful to people regularly. And, and uh, I've had many, many people reach out to me personally to help them connect with people that can help them with the situation. And, and I'm really thrilled. Again, I, I don't deserve any of the, of, the, of the thanks for that. It's just these wonderful people that have said, hey, I'm here if somebody needs that help. And, and I think that's so powerful and, and it's so cool that, that we have an opportunity to, to not only report about the phenomenon, but to actually, you know, make a difference as well. So that's an honor, an absolute honor. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Totally. How, and how good is it when someone contacts you a bit later and says, oh, my God, thank you so much for putting me in touch with that person because now all of this terrible stuff that was happening is no longer happening and I'm happy and uh, life is good. You know, that just yeah. oh, my, it makes my heart just expand and, and, and I get all the warm, fuzzy feelings. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're approaching the tail end of our journey here, but... Uh, um, just take a minute, Sarah, tell everybody what's coming up or what's going on with the uh, Yowie Central and, and uh, tell us what's going on. Well, I am actually about to take a couple of weeks off. So that's what I'm doing. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm having a holiday. Okay, moving on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the other <side. laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm about to open the champagne right now. Uh, oh. No, not really. Um, I am taking a couple of weeks off, but um, I've got... Uh, lots of really exciting conversations planned. Um, I, as I said to you, I had a, had a fascinating conversation with uh, two original Australian elders this week and they, they've uh, very kindly agreed to um, have a chat with me for the show to share oh. some of their incredible knowledge um, wow. with, with us. So I'll be re really excited to share that. I've also got um, Daryl, the shamanic healer that I've been working with, who blows my mind every time I talk to him. Um, he's going to, to come on the show shortly. I've got a, a chat lined up with him. Um, yeah, just lots of, and lots of, uh, lots of yowie stuff, lots of paranormal stuff. There's, there's lots of really exciting stuff to come after I've had a break in a couple of weeks. Oh, and I should have a new logo any minute now, Cade. Ooh, okay. <laughs> my, okay. My, my, my dear friend Cade has, <laughs> has offered to design me a new logo and I'm so excited oh, um, and and, uh, and help me build my website. So that should be happening sometime in the next few months too. Oh, phenomenal. Very cool. And Mr. It's Moya. All it's all what? I'm sorry, I cut you off. It's all very, it's all very exciting. Yeah, it is. It's wonderful. So, Ms. DeMoya, what's going on with Believe? Uh, so, Believe, it is wrapping up its 15th season uh, in about a week. And uh, then I, too, am taking a break. I'm having six weeks off until uh, season 16 comes out. So, uh, I am looking for guests for season 16, 17, and 18 at the moment. So, if uh, you want to come onto the show, please get in contact with me. Uh, but also in the in the downtime in between seasons, I'm going to start uh, some very basic pre-production of a little micro documentary I will be doing on an individual who is a medium and how it's affected his life. Oh. So um, I believe we'll be going to a video format of some kind um, very, very soon, which I'm very excited about. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I think I think those both sound wonderful. And, and uh, can you both let everybody know where to find your shows? I, I put it in the description, but uh, Cade, where can they find the Believe? So the best place to find Believe is on the website. Go to believepod.com and you'll find links to every platform you can listen to the show or jump on to any podcast platform. You'll find the show on there and you can subscribe for free and listen to all 15 episodes, uh, 15 seasons of it, <laughs> which is uh, a lot of episodes. I think it's like 150 plus on there. Nice. Well done. And Sarah, where can they find Yowie Central? Well, Yowie Central will have a website soon, so you'll be able to look at that, but not yet. <laughs> uh, you can find Yowie Central on all the major platforms as well. Um, I do have a, a Facebook group uh, for Yowie Central listeners, and uh, my email is yowiecentral at gmail.com. I also am taking submissions. Uh, I'm always taking submissions. If you've got a story that you would really like to share, 
um, then then get in touch with me and uh, you can come on the show. You guys are way too good at this. <laughs> Kate, Kate, <laughs> We're sleek. I know. Aren't you, we? Very geez. sleek. <laughs> Kate, Kate's planning three seasons out, and, and Sarah, you're, you're way ahead of the game, and, and I don't know what I'm doing Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are way too good. You're making me look bad, but God bless you. Thank you guys for coming on. It's been an absolute blast as always. I, I just love these opportunities to connect and get together and, discuss ideas and and i I, this has been our our first real round table here on the show so thank you guys for uh being my pilot round table thank you so much for having us um i uh, really appreciate uh being asked it's so it's such a joy to come on not only to talk to you my friend but to also talk to kate at the same time really cool um i'd love to do it again sometime absolutely yeah it was heaps of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on. And uh, thank you, uh, Sarah and Brent, for doing all the, the heavy lifting today because I don't know if I – Brent, you know this, but I've had two hours sleep because of a, a very sick <laughs> little girl. And, um, yeah, you guys you guys saved me today. <laughs> uh, you did great, brother. You, ever, you guys were wonderful. And, and thank you to all of you that were out there. And, and to those of you that uh, put comments in the chat, I'm sorry if we missed some. I know I didn't catch everything. I, I do apologize, but uh, we, we did try to include everything we could in this. I'm not really good at this yet. This is my first round table, so you can't be too upset. Um, but I will get better. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for tonight's show. Thank you so much for being here and being a part of the journey as always. Um, and remember, we'll be back Friday nights for another live show. Sheldon will be returning and joining me then, um, and uh, Saturday, of course, as well. So um, I guess that's all we got for you tonight. So uh, Kate and Sarah, just stick in the, in the Skype with me, if you would, uh, and I'm going to close the show here. But I just want to tell you guys, remember, I love you guys. You guys are amazing, and thank you for everybody that's continuing to help people find the shows. Uh, I know our YouTube audience is growing. It's not. It's it's just been a wonderful thing to meet new people that are coming in and finding the shows. If you're new to the show and you like what you see, please subscribe and uh, ring the bell so you know when they, we go live. But we do live shows Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday night here on YouTube. So we'd love to see you be part of that, and please watch for the Paranormal Portal podcast as well. That is out on all the major platforms, uh, and for the most part, that's not this. That's a different show entirely, although we do take shows from YouTube from time to time and put them over. Uh, I'm sure this one will be pretty soon to be on the, on the, on the playlist as well. But if you, if you check it out, we've got a couple hundred, like almost nearing 300 episodes now, I think. So um, please check them out. We'd love your support there as well. And uh, remember to continue to share the word. So love you all. Be good. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day. And remember to laugh as much as you can. And I'll see you on Friday night. Thank you, everybody. Subscribe to Believe. (laughs) Disregard Cade. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Uh, Good night.